So let's work on the concept of the cap and trade policy to prevent pollution. Let's assume again that we have two players in the market. So that's N and Bill that produce output which generates pollution. Now, the government sets a limit of polluting 60 units and that limit is the cap from the title. This is what the cap means. There is a limit, a cap at 60 units of pollution. Now, how do we pollute those units by having permission to do so? To do so, meaning we have literally 60 permits. So 60 permits means that whoever has the permits is able to pollute. Now, how much do we have to reduce pollution? Well, let's see. In total, we can have 60 plus 60 units of pollution reduction, meaning that out of the 120 units of total units, sorry, out of 120 total units of pollution reduction, we're allowed to pollute 60 units, meaning that we must reduce the remaining 60 units of pollution. So we must reduce 60 units of pollution. Reduce 60 units. Okay, let's assume for the sake of the example that Bill has the 60 permits. So the 60 permits go to Bill. Now, if Bill has 60 permits, what does this imply? It implies that Bill can pollute 60 units. So Bill pollutes 60 units pollutes 60 units, meaning that he has to reduce zero units. So the reduction by bill by bill is going to be zero units. So this is bill's reduction. There is no cost for him to reduce pollution because he doesn't have to. Now, we still must we still must reduce 60 units of pollution. That's a rule set by the government, meaning that meaning that the 60 units left of reducing pollution are gonna go to N. So she has to reduce the entire pollution by herself. So pollution reduction reduction is 60 units by N, and we can see it's gonna be it's gonna be at a certain marginal cost. For the sake of the of the example, let's say that that marginal cost is gonna be $40. Now, recall from the previous video that to achieve a cost-effective policy, to achieve the result of reducing pollution at the lowest cost possible, we must have that the marginal cost of the first player of N must equal to the marginal cost of bill. Now the question is how can we get there because at the moment we are not there. We're having a marginal cost of $40 for N versus a marginal cost of $0 for bill. Well, that's where the second word in the title comes into play, the trade. We can trade the permits and how does the trade happen? Well, let's see. Bill has 60 permits now. Bill has, so we have 60 permits from here. N has zero permits and has zero permits over here. Now, N, of course, would like one permit to pollute because polluting means that she will, she will not have to reduce it. She will not have to incur the cost of reducing pollution. In other words, we would, we would trade one permit from Bill to N. So one permit goes there. The question is, when does the permit go? So how is this trade happening? Well, Bill is getting money from the permit. So Bill is getting money, whereas also Bill is incurring a cost of reducing pollution because one permit less for Bill means one unit of pollution that he is not allowed to make. So he has to reduce pollution by one unit. At the level of one unit of pollution reduction, he has to incur a cost. And let's say that marginal cost for the first unit of pollution reduction is going to be equal to $4. So let's say that's $4. Now, assuming that the permit is more expensive than the $4 at that level, let's say he's selling the permit for $15, for instance, well, he would have a $15 gain versus a $4, $4 loss, which is the cost. Well, the trade is going to happen because the gain is higher than the cost. And the same logic goes for N. When would N buy the permit? Well, let's say the permit costs $15, so N is losing $50, right? N is losing $50 for the permit, but she would gain the fact, she would gain the fact that she must, she would gain the fact that she is allowed to pollute one unit. Polluting one unit for N means reducing pollution by one unit, right? One, ho hope this wording makes sense, just keep track of the words. One more unit of pollution means one unit less of reducing pollution. They are synonymous, so to speak. So pollution reduction by one unit, meaning that now N has to reduce only 59 units instead of 60. So at the 59 units of pollution reduction, her marginal cost would be lower. Let's say it would be, it would be uh, for example, $37. 
right to to pollute to pollute one unit less she would save she would save the 37 dollars that's a positive for n she would save the 37 dollars and this is all hypothetical i'm just showing some uh, you know some examples now the loss is smaller than the gain so yes the transaction makes sense for n as well so the first permit is going to be traded now what happens on the graph what happens on the graph let's see let's follow the points well now n on the graph is over here whereas bill on the graph of the marginal cost let me just change colors because i think that's not very visible uh, so bill on the graph is over here at the moment at the moment he's polluting slightly and n N is polluting uh, slightly less. Sorry, N is polluting slightly more. She is reducing pollution a bit less, whereas Bill has to reduce pollution a bit more. Now, what we want to have, remember, is that the marginal cost between them must be equal. So we would like to get at a, such a trade level between the permits so that, so that the marginal costs between them are gonna be equal. We would like to get to that point. So for instance, here, and here this is again for the sake of the example and we know that at that level they will stop trading if they satisfy the government requirement which is they're able to pollute 60 units but they also must reduce pollution by 60 units and let's suppose for the sake of the example that they're gonna keep trading the permits this flow is going to happen is going to happen as long as these points creep creep up on the graphs so this goes towards towards that green point bill is increasing the marginal cost along this line so we're we're meeting at the same marginal cost and for the sake of the example let's suppose that the 60 units of pollution reduction is going to be allocated in the following way n is going to reduce pollution by uh, for instance 40 units bill is going to reduce pollution by 20 units so the government requirement is satisfied the marginal costs of doing so are equal meaning we do achieve our cost efficiency and because we are trading permit this flow implies an exchange of money and that money is the price of the permit and since we stop at the marginal costs equal between them that's also going to belong to correspond to the price of the permit so for instance if the if if the price of the permit at which we stop exchanging uh, exchanging them is going to be equal to the $35 $35 there in that case whatever gain that bill is getting from selling the permit so he is getting the $35 from the permit positive $35 but he is incurring an additional cost of reducing pollution and that additional cost also belongs to $35 because we said the marginal cost would be equal to the price so he would lose $35 and we can see that that's an indifference point there is no uh, net gain or net loss so that is the equilibrium point where the price is going to be equal to the marginal costs between them hope this makes sense and we are done